Hey everyone and welcome back to BMX News. This is a weekly BMX news show where I talk about everything that happened in the previous week within the world of BMX that I think you guys might care about. That being said, and to point out the complete obvious, if you guys watch the Montana Ricky Rider Spotlight videos, you'll recognize where I'm at right now. No, this isn't green screen. Right there. <laughs> We are in Montana Ricky's house filming this week's BMX news video. And since I'm traveling, this is going to be a slimmed down version of the news video, but a few gigantic things happened this past week that I had to talk about. So I had to get a video out for you guys. The first thing I want to talk about, the obvious, the huge, the title, the thumbnail. El Toro is apparently no more. There's a lot of hearsay going on with this, but what I've heard so far is that they had to modify the stairs to meet some sort of regulation, which meant putting in a flat in the middle of the stairs. And then I also heard that they're going to be putting some sort of pillars at the top and the bottom of the stairs, which are probably going to make it a lot harder or impossible to do tricks down them. I don't know for sure yet, so I can't say one way or the other. All I know is that that school has been dealing with skateboarders, scooters, BMX riders, maybe even rollerbladers for probably over 10 years now of people trying to go there and do tricks and ruining the middle rail that used to be there and just all kinds of stuff that would make it totally understandable if they wanted to make it so no one could ever hit that stair set ever again. And one thing that a lot of people don't know is that there's actually two identical stair sets at El Toro and from what I've heard and obviously if they're meeting some sort of regulations by changing it they're probably changing the other one too. Time will tell and we will see in the future or what the future holds for El Toro. Personally, I really don't care either way. People are gonna find new ways to send themselves downstairs. It was just kind of crazy because El Toro was such an iconic place where people could go, like the scooter kid doing the backflip recently and just instantly blow up overnight by doing something crazy. And I don't know if anyone can say for sure whether or not there will be another spot like that just because of where El Toro was located in relation to the action sports communities that went and hit that spot. And of course, how can we talk about El Toro being taken down without talking about Dylan Stark and his absolutely insane roof drop into the bank that was formed when they took out the stairs? If you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. I don't know if I'm allowed to play it. I'm probably not allowed to play it. So you're going to want to check the link in the description to see this video. But if you've ever seen El Toro and you looked at the roof and then you didn't look at it or think twice about it because it was literally like 20 feet above the stairs. Yeah, Dylan Stark rode down that on a full suspension mountain bike, jumped off the roof, went into the bank and holy crap, it is seriously one of the most insane things I've ever seen or ever been done on a bicycle for that matter. Total insanity. And in a last second update, I was cruising through Instagram just now trying to find some more information. And what I saw was somebody posting saying that they talked to the construction workers and it said that the construction workers told them that they're replacing all 20 stairs and that they are putting pillars at the bottom. So maybe it won't be a stairs, flat stairs, and it will still be the same set just with new stairs and pillars at the bottom. I don't know, maybe somebody's gonna blast off the top and go over the pillars if they don't put pillars at the top. Either way, like I said, the future is going to be interesting for El Toro as much as I really don't care about it. And that brings us into the next huge BMX related thing to talk about this week. And that is the Mongoose Special Edition Stranger Things Max bike that is only going to be available starting June 30th at Target. This bike that you're seeing on the screen right now is modeled after the bike that Max Mayfield is riding in season three of Stranger Things. I really like that show. I like BMX. I like that they actually made a bike for the show that is correct to the time period that the show is set in because if you watched the previous two seasons, you probably noticed the modern BMX bikes that they were riding, which I also thought was cool but it wasn't accurate and this is kind of cool that they made it accurate and they made it something that BMX riders can be psyched on as much as some of them hate, some of them love. It's very polarizing, but regardless, this is BMX and it's just another one of those things that if you don't care, don't care, keep scrolling and ignore it and let the people who do care and want to enjoy it 
do so. And that brings us to a video that I wanted to quickly mention from the top three placers at the Vans BMX Pro Cup in Stuttgart, Germany. It features Larry Edgar who got third, Sergio Leos who got second, and Jason Watts who got first. And after that, I wanna talk about Nowhere BMX's new signature Dan Nielsen Beast Mode frame. This is just like their Mike D signature frame in design, but the geometry is different. So it's got a longer rear end at 13.25 inches. It's got a longer top tube, has the same steep head tube and same look and feel, but it's made with geometry that has both responsiveness and roominess in mind. And if you guys wanna check out the frame and get more information, check out the link in the description below. And then after that, I figured I should throw in at least one video for you guys this week. And that video is Devin Smiley's new Eclat video. Holy crap, this is one that even if you aren't into the new school techie street type stuff, you can watch and appreciate even if you don't understand everything he's doing like I don't because you can just see how technically impressive and difficult everything he does looks and thinking about just doing one part of any line that he does in this video feels totally impossible while he's adding in 30 other tricks before he even gets to the fakie where he does some kind of trick out of that too. 43,000 views on this video already. So, so I definitely think that this is one that a lot of you are going to enjoy. It might not be for everyone, but hey, this is what you get. And next week we'll be back with the normal BMX news video. And after that, we've got one podcast interview type thing to talk about. And that is a rollback podcast, this time with Clint Miller, the owner of Colony Bikes down in Australia. I haven't had a chance to listen to this one yet, but all the other other rollback podcasts are good so I'm sure that it's good and I'm sure that it's going to be worth a listen and hopefully having something with Clint Miller makes it up for all of the people who didn't want to watch the Devin Smiley video because a lot of you are probably the guys who are going to be into the Clint Miller podcast and with that being said that's going to wrap up this week's BMX news video if you want to check out anything that I talked about hit the links in the description below if you're new subscribe if you did enjoy it or you want to talk about anything from El Toro to the Stranger Things mongoose bicycle leave it in the comments. Let's have a conversation and let me know if you want Ricky and I to do a podcast tonight, just like we've been doing, but actually together. We'll see you there potentially if you guys say that you want to see it and enough of you say that you want to see it. So with that, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you tomorrow for another video and maybe we'll see you later for a live stream with Ricky. Thanks again and goodbye.